people are very interested in marriage. People are very interested in what happens if things are not working. You know, so that is why a lot of people asked me to do uh, part two and uh, probably part three about uh, number one, child custody, number two, division of property with when in case the, the marriage is, is dissolved, right? Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Christine. Uh, let's start with distribution of wealth. A lot of people are having fights. They are very mega fights that we've seen online mm -hmm. about... Um, about, I don't understand, the, the, probably what you would start by telling us is why there is all, I, I think people who are, who, are, who are rich have wheels. Uh -huh, you would think. You would think. Yes. They, some, most of them don't. Most of them don't. People mm. fear wheels and I don't know why. Yeah. They feel as if you're inviting death by drawing a wheel. But that's not the case. You're just protecting yourself and your assets. And your loved ones, in case you're not there, you'd be surprised. Majority don't have wills. Mm. Yeah. So the reason why um, there's a lot of fights over property is because um, by the time people are divorcing, they're not in good terms. And unfortunately, they don't want the best for the other person. There is a lot of emotion involved. And so... You want to take what's yours and sometimes disenfranchise the other person just for the sake of, you know, showing them or teaching mm. them a lesson, which is not good at all. And um, I personally think it's unnecessary if you had planned your estate. I mean, or rather if you had planned for an eventuality like this one, but people don't think about it, you know you would uh, prepare a prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement when you're still in good terms. It would avoid these unnecessary fights for matrimonial that property. Is even more, that's, that's even more dangerous. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's, let's, let's then back up and talk about the, the prenuptial agreement. Mm -hmm. So, when I am a man mm -hmm. and I'm marrying a lady and I have, I've, I've amassed a considerable amount of wealth, Mm -hmm. And now I'm going into marriage. Let's say I have a, I have I have a big real estate mm -hmm. uh, going on in Lovington or or any part of the country, Diani and things like that. I have thirty of them there, mm -hmm. and then I have I have another in Karin. I have another in another set of property in Runda. Then I have this tracks of, of uh, and then I'm I'm young, thirty eight, mm -hmm. and then I I want to get married. Mm -hmm. So now, how does how how do I approach the idea of 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 prenup? Because it's mm -hmm. very, like you've said, when you talk about the wheel and you talk about uh, prenup, mm -hmm. the people, people already, for the wheel, people are saying, okay, my death is around the corner. Mm -hmm. For prenup, when you approach somebody with prenup, mm -hmm. so do you know for sure that this is going to end? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, like, it's like buying your coffin. <laughs> Well, uh, there's nothing wrong with buying your coffin anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think it's just a misconception. Nobody actually gets into marriage expecting to divorce one day. But things happen, things you never foresaw. And having this prenup is just preparing yourself just in case it happens. It's not encouraging you to go that route. And I think I should mention at this point that the property you come with into the marriage is not matrimonial property and it is not subject to division in case you divorce. Whatever you come with into the marriage is yours and you will live with it if it is still there. Same thing with your spouse. That is not matrimonial property. Matrimonial property by definition is the property that you acquire during the subsistence of your marriage. So you with all those pieces of land in Diani and your tracks and everything, it will not be divided unless, unless there is further development on that property. Like if it's a piece of land, you came with it into the marriage and then while you were married, you developed it. You built a resort on it or something. That resort itself is matrimonial property. Yeah. But the land upon which it was built, which you came with, is not matrimonial property. The, so that, that brings us to the, if I have all this wealth, mm -hmm. uh, then I have to, before I get married, I have to group them together. 
get an accountant and there is when you want to become president you're asked to to you know to reveal your your worth mm -hmm. as a person yeah so this is the time that now you start building your worth as yes. a person yeah. bring them all together mm -hmm. and um, how do i know that this is exactly what what you're presenting is the truth to the to during the at, at, by the way uh how before you answer that, how 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 then? So you just bring something on the table and say that this is this mm -hmm. is what I have. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you want to do the prenup, it's not a document that a third party will do for you. It's you and your intended spouse with the help of an, a lawyer. So if you're both clear on what you own and what she owns, it's just about being honest. You know, we have met. We are not married. This is what I have. Put it on the table. And her, she does the same. And this is how you intend for this property to be developed, managed, or used. It's not even about dividing it. In the prenup, it's an agreement. As it says, it's an mm. agreement. So you can talk about your property plus other things. What you want to do with your property or how you want it to be developed or managed mm. is just for buffering you, just in case. And the prenups are more common in the States because they are the way the property is divided is different from how it's divided here because here it's divided as per your contribution. Yeah, there it's different. It's very different. And that is probably what is really confusing mm -hmm. uh, Kenyans or Africans as a whole mm. with, with, because you, somebody uh, gets into marriage and after four, four years, mm -hmm. they, 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 they get out with a very large chunk of the property. Mm. And you're wondering, but this person has been managing this property, has been developing this property for by themselves, mm -hmm. for themselves for this long. And then this spouse comes into marriage mm -hmm. and, then, and then three years down the line or four years down the line, they bold. Yeah. And then now, uh, probably, I don't know, do you, uh, do you have an idea of how it happens in America and how it happens in the country? I wouldn't speak authoritatively yeah. about American law, but here... Mm. Um, I think in that regard, our law is better in that it minimizes chances of people getting married for purposes of just enriching themselves. Mm. Because if it was a division whereby it's 50-50 irrespective of everything, mm. then it would encourage women to look out for rich men, what we call gold digging, yeah. just to marry them, divorce, and take half their property. But because we don't, we don't operate like that here, you have to prove contribution and the contribution can be financial or non-financial. So even if you marry a rich man, he was already rich before he married you. Whatever you acquire or he acquires while he's still married to you, that small portion, that is the only one that will be considered matrimonial property. And even when it is already considered matrimonial property, you have to come and say, I contributed this much and here is the proof. And then after you have proved your contribution, then that is what you're apportioned, and the rest is apportioned to the them. idea of the the idea of proof is very is very is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I I am a housewife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I am taking care of the children. Mm -hmm. The gentleman is going over all over town. You know, making these land deals, making these deals. You know, mm -hmm. uh, getting these tenders from the government and doing all the work by himself. When he comes back home, mm -hmm. I am. I'm taking care of him. I'm taking care of the children. I'm I'm taking them to school. I'm doing all these things. Proof is that is that proof enough? Um, yes, it is tricky though because um, contribution is financial and non-financial. So what you just talked about is the non-financial contribution. Yes, but how do you how do you put it? How do you quantify it financially? It's very difficult. Sometimes it's impossible because if I come and say that um, I was cooking for him, ironing his clothes to enable him to go out there looking smart to make those deals. And then he can come and defend himself and say, no, I had hired a housekeeper. I had yes. hired a chef. So you are not doing any of those. Yeah. So that is not contribution in kind I actually paid for these services. And then you'll come and say, okay, fine. I supervised the chef and the house, housekeeper. But how? How do you prove it? So this is something that is left to the court to, de to decide. What value shall they give to that contribution that is non-financial? 
is it 10%, 20%, 30%, but it will never really, I've not come across one that is 50%. If you're a housewife or a stay-at-home mom, I have not seen it getting to 50%. So, so let's go to the detail. We can, we can decide to go to the specifics. Mm -hmm. I, I, had 10, I, had, uh, I had 20 trucks before we got married. Now I have, uh, let's say, um, a 35. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about the the 10% mm -hmm. that you have contributed, ironing my shirt and, and you know, ironing my blouse or, mm -hmm. you know, brushing my shoes or whatever you are doing or taking kids to school, mm -hmm. then now we get 10% of the, of the 15 trucks mm -hmm. on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, you came with 10 already, so you, remove those 10. Then the ones you acquired are 15. So we mm. are looking at the 15. So we are not going to look at the trucks alone. We are going to look at the trucks plus everything else. Mm. Yeah. Then you'll be told 20% of everything. If, let's say you have, I'm sure you don't only have trucks. You have other things. So if that 10% is quantified financially, you can buy her off, mm. give her money that is equivalent to that 10%, and we settle it. Or... You can uh, decide out of all these trucks, this one is more valuable than this one. This one is worth that amount. Take that one, do what you will with it. Mm. So you don't have to actually give the property. You can actually buy off your expert. Do you need to go to the court somewhere? You can just, I can just come to Christine and mm -hmm. tell Christine, look, I have a problem with, with, with the missus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have agreed that we are going to part ways. Mm -hmm. We are going to divorce and... Uh, uh, in my estimation, uh, this um, this lady came to uh, you know came to my uh, decided to to marry me, mm -hmm. and I had ten tracks, and now we have we have been we have worked well together, mm -hmm. and now we have twenty five tracks, and I would like to give her ten percent or twenty percent of the fifteen additional tracks mm -hmm. because I feel like she was very uh, she was a force. Mm -hmm. uh, behind everything that I have done. Mm -hmm. But this marriage is not working, but she has been a very good business manager along, alongside me. Mm -hmm. and, and she has agreed mm -hmm. to take the 10%. Mm -hmm. What then happens? I actually think that is the best way to go about it. Eh? Mm. Because what you've described right now is conscious uncoupling, mm. where you don't have to go to court and fight over things. You just sit down and agree, and you give voluntarily. And you involve a lawyer, actually who will come and help you actually come up with that agreement because sometimes things that are not documented may backfire in the future. You can actually do that. You don't have to file a division of matrimonial property suit after divorce or during divorce. You don't have to. It's not a must. You only go to court to decide for you in matters that you have been unable to decide for yourself or the two of you with your spouse. So that is actually a very good way to go. Mm. Yeah. And then and then she says no. Mm -hmm. I I think I I deserve more. Mm. Then now you have to go to court and uh, they they are people who are not able to defend themselves really against very uh for example if the person that you're trying to divorce is very powerful. Mm -hmm. You know this was this is a this is a this is a lady that has inherited a lot of wealth. Mm -hmm. She's very powerful. Uh, she has a lot of uh, knowledge of the law, and uh, you know, and 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 so even trying to get something from her. Yes, you have been in her life. You have been been in their lives. You fought very well alongside them to build this property, mm -hmm. and then at the point of uh, at the point of divorce, it becomes very difficult for you. For example, a house, a house, a house, uh, a housewife. Mm -hmm. She can't even afford a lawyer because now every money is tied to the man. Yeah. You know, the, every yeah. money that they have is, in, is, is, is tied to the man. She does, she's not a signatory to the account. Mm -hmm. She has nothing. Mm -hmm. And now she has to make the long walk to Upper Hill, to Mudoni's house, uh, to, to Christine's office. Mm -hmm. But she has nothing. She can't even pay for, for, for a lawyer mm -hmm. to go and defend her. Mm -hmm. what, what then happens in this case? That is quite unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. It happens though. Um, just weigh your options, you know. Can you represent yourself? How far can you go? What do you need? Once you know that you can represent yourself and you know what you need, now ask yourself, where can I get what I need? I need information, legal information, 
consult. Once you've consulted, if you want to go that route, you can go and you can represent yourself. But remember, there are lawyers who charge um, relatively high, others relatively low. Go where you can be able to afford. Get all the help you can. But sometimes, most women I find, uh, they give up either because of lack of knowledge or lack of the muscle to actually follow through with this, considering the person they are taking to court is very powerful. They just give up and they let it go. They, they walk out with nothing. It's quite unfortunate. But I would encourage them to at least try. You don't always have to go the court route. You can also, also try um, mediation. Approach one lawyer. Let them refer you to a mediator. The mediator will pick up from there. You can sit down together, discuss that arrangement that you had talked about earlier when you were talking about trucks. He may be sympathetic enough and say, you know, you've been the mother to my children. You still are the mother to my children. You've been a good wife to me. Take this, you know, build yourself with this. If that doesn't work, I would highly encourage pursue the legal route. Go to court. The government doesn't, doesn't help people who can't. There, in America, I hear that they, they can appoint an attorney for you if you're not able to. Um, here, no. You have to pursue it yourself. Mm. Mm. You have, your, marriage, your marriage is on the rocks. It is on you. It's on you. The best that um, the law society can do is give you a pro bono lawyer. Like, for instance, you can go to FIDA. You will be assigned an advocate and they will help you. This advocate is getting a small stipend um, from the society, but they can be able to assist you mm. if you cannot afford a lawyer. But then again, most people do not even know that 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 that, that there is the existence of FIDA. Yeah, many people do not know that this 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 is they can go this route of you know. So mm. it becomes it becomes it becomes very very difficult. So then um, the other complicated thing is that. Uh, I, I don't know how it works because when somebody, people usually have companies mm -hmm. and there are other investors in these companies. Mm -hmm. Somebody might, 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 have, might, might be worth uh, 2 billion kind of shillings, mm -hmm. but it's not in liquid cash. Mm -hmm. It is tied up in so many, in so many businesses. Mm -hmm. I don't know then how the court now navigate through these muddy waters and say, okay, we can, we can actually pick what is what and then how, how then do they, do they give you this? All right. Um, property that is owned by a company is not matrimonial property mm. because a company, a limited liability company or a registered company is a legal entity on its own. It has the capacity to own property, meaning if I am worth all that money uh, and I'm a director shareholder in a limited company, this is company property and I'm going through a divorce, that will not be considered. What will be considered is property that is not registered under company, property that is not inherited, and property that I didn't come with before the marriage. So you may find I may be a very wealthy person, but what is declared as matrimonial property is a very small fraction of what is in the background. And that is the only thing the court will be looking at. That's why it's always better to just have these discussions, the two of you. Like, don't take it to court for court to decide for you. You know yourselves better. You know your past, you know what you've been through to develop and acquire what you've acquired. Put your animosity aside. The, the, down, prob the, problematic, the problematic thing with uh, putting animosity aside is that uh -huh. I, I have a suspicion that divorce comes with a lot of animosity. It does. It does. And, and this is the thing. And if somebody knows that, 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 that kunamali watakupata, mm -hmm. so that's basically where they wait you. That is it. And this powerful man will also not be sitting there waiting for you to come and claim. He will also go see his lawyer. And this is very wrong, by the way, but mm. they dispose of property. Not really disposing, but disposing in the sense that I'll take this title, put it in someone else's name, such that it is not mine. Legally, it is not mine. So that now when we go to declare rights in matrimonial property, I'm bringing a very tiny fraction of what I actually own. And then when the divorce is over and the division is over now, I retransfer back to my name. So the That court, is someone disenfranchising his, his spouse intentionally. 
Mm. Yeah. So if somebody, somebody, even if the courts are look, and even if you go, to, if you went to the court and said, "Look, this property was ours; it was only sold last week," mm -hmm. the court doesn't 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 want to get involved in what is what is presented to them and what is not. As long as it doesn't belong to you, it's not matrimonial property. But that, if you bring it to court and you can prove it, it will show malice, mm. uh, bad faith, and maybe the judgment of the court will be influenced somehow. But now they can't now come and say, okay, this property, you've sold it to hide it or something. So bring it back. Mm -mm. Mm. That one is gone like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then uh, you have, uh, if you agree uh, amicably, like we are setting now, and agree that, okay, this is what I'm going to give mm -hmm. toward this, and, the, and, the, and the, the other spouse agrees that, well, uh, I don't think it is fair, but I think I will go with it. Mm -hmm. For now, I don't want to make whatever is whatever is 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 whatever is thinking. Uh, you know, yeah. think here. Mm -hmm. So then, so then you agree. Then you what? But then, when you go to court, how does the process now? Uh, you know, uh, take mm -hmm. course. All right. So what normally happens with uh, my clients? They'll come for divorce, and then the moment my client comes for divorce, I I have to preempt that the next thing we are going to do is go for division of matrimonial property because we can't file for matrimonial property until and unless the divorce has been concluded. But by that time, somebody somewhere who doesn't have some good intentions may dispose of property, conceal or hide. So I file immediately as I'm filing the divorce in the lower court. I file for declaration of matrimonial property rights in the high court. That one is just to say this property has been declared matrimonial. It should not be interfered with. It should not be sold. It should not be transferred or married. Remember, with there family. is no prenup. There is no prenup. So how do you how do you then come up with this matrimonial? Now, this client of mine who has come to me uh. seeking for a divorce knows her property or his property and the spouse's property. So it means you have to be vigilant even when you're in a marriage. When your spouse buys something, are you aware? that they have bought something, because that is matrimonial property. You see, if you don't know, how will you come to me uh, and tell me this is matrimonial property? You can't. You'll have nothing. Yeah? But there are some couples who are very open with each other. So my client will come to me and tell me, here is a list of pieces of land that my husband has purchased or we have purchased. These ones are in my name. These ones are in his name. These ones are jointly registered. Here are vehicles we own for business, commercial vehicles or private. Here are uh, buildings we have put up. So it's up to you to do your due diligence. Some people may not even know what their spouse owns. They hire private investigators to go and get this information because I just need a list. It's not up to me or the court. It's up to you to know what you own as a couple. Now, once you have listed everything and we have prepared our application, we file it in the High Court. High Court makes a determination, of course, after going through the whole process and then declares it matrimonial property. If injunctions are required, they're put in place and it stays there waiting for the divorce to be finalized. How do you, do you, do you, uh, when, when you are, when you are put, when you are presenting this to the court mm -hmm. and saying that these are matrimonial property, mm -hmm. whether true or not true, but mm -hmm. your client is telling you that she believes that this is matrimonial property. Mm -hmm. uh, so the injunction that is placed on those, prop on, the, on those, on, on those several properties, mm -hmm. he served. Yes, he served. The moment we prepare that application, we have to serve him personally or his lawyer. At that time, we'll already know, okay, we are doing the divorce. We know he has a lawyer he doesn't have. Huh? Serve him personally. If he has a lawyer, the lawyer will also come on record. They have to be given that opportunity. When they come on record, now they'll also come and respond to that and say um, whether this is indeed the case or it's not. And we will now go to court and be heard. Because one party may be saying this is matrimonial property, another one is saying this is not. So we will both be heard, and you have to support your claims. But this is this is after the after the after the process of divorce has come to a completion. No, we are still at the process of declaring. So this you might you, you might you declaring. might be in two courts at the same time. Yes. In the court of divorce, uh, yes. do you call it the court of divorce? Family court. Family court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also in the high court. In the high court, yes. where the matrimonial property is supposed to be, yes. you know, argued. You can also be in the children's court at the same time. You can be in three courts at the same time. Mm. 
Yeah, so this is just declaring. We have not yet started division. Division will come after you have concluded the divorce. So you are going to court and saying, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this, this piece of property is mine. Yeah. This one is also mine. Uh, the guy comes or the lady, the, the, the other spouse comes and says, no, 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 no. This one is not much more property. Mm -hmm. And you, and you, and, and the, that judgment is hard. And then, okay, say, okay, let's take out that. Yes. Let's remain with this. Yes. Okay, this one's have, we, these are matrimonial property. Let's hold them together. Nobody should, should sell them off. We should not have cars having punches all over the place. Mm -hmm. So these ones are here. Okay, so now we are done. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and deal with the with the with the divorce issue. Exactly. Now you go back, you deal with the divorce. It will take maybe six months or thereabouts. You finish. Now you go back to the high court. We have finished with the divorce. Now we are no longer a married couple. We are ready to divide this property. And then now you con you continue with that process. Mm. Yeah. Now you will come and now prove, okay, I, I, I purchased this. Here are my bank transfer uh, documents. I took a loan. Uh, you know, bring evidence. You don't just say. And a sale agreement is not, is not proof of purchase or ownership. Because I can actually, as a wife, for instance, I can see a nice piece of land somewhere. And I go and I negotiate purchase. And I enter into an agreement with the seller. So the seller, the agreement says, this is the buyer, this is the seller. I am the buyer. I come and discuss with my husband, and he says, yes, that's a very good investment. Here is the money go and buy. He gives me 100% of the cash, and I go and buy. So when we come to division of the property, I say I bought and I'm using that sale agreement as the evidence of purchase. He can actually come and say, no, you just did the negotiation. I bought the property, I financed it, and here is my evidence. You see? So it's 100% his contribution. Then you can come and argue, okay, but looking for the property and negotiating, I contributed in that way. So now the court will have to decide this non-financial contribution that I did, what is it worth in this property? Or, <laughs> or if you give me money in dollars uh -huh. and give it to me in a briefcase, uh -huh. and when I bought the land, uh -huh. I can see where is the evidence that you gave me he money. There's no evidence. So, it's all about evidence. You have to support your claim with something. The, but marriage doesn't work like that. We, we both know. We know, yeah. 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 That Nobody it, sees this coming. Yes, yes. <laughs> or things, prepares for it. Yes, and then, and then you'll just to cut that now we are in this situation and I have... I have nothing to prove anything. Yeah, yeah, you have nothing. And that's why now something like a prenup can help. Because in the prenup, you will see the future and say, what if this marriage doesn't work? What happens to me as the wife and I'm a housewife? And you're the one who has told me maybe uh, resign from your employment. I'll take care of you. You take care of our kids. In the prenup, we will write, in case of this eventuality, you will leave me with the matrimonial home. You will leave me with this car. You will leave me with X amount of money. And we agree. You see, now we are happy. We are talking. We're in love. It's very easy for us to agree on these things. Eh? So then the prenup... It's actually the opposite. When Before you marry. It's actually the opposite. When the, 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 the spouse, the spouse to be, uh -huh. it's like... Time, I am getting into, into this uh, marriage mm -hmm. and we are discussing how we are going to leave this marriage. Mm -hmm. It's very unchristianly. <laughs> it, it don't, you, don't, you, don't go to, you don't go to church mm -hmm. and, 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 and stand on the altar and uh -huh. say mm -hmm. that te till death do us part. Uh -huh. And then before you say that, mm -hmm. you have another small meeting where you are drawing up the prenup, in that in case of this thing, you leave me with this. In yeah. case of this thing, then you show yeah. up two, three months later on Sunday <laughs> in church on the altar and I say, say <laughs> and say, till death do us part. And, and true enough, people don't do that. But you see, you have to be really smart and say, am I going to get into this marriage and just hope for the best? Or am I going to get into it having prepared myself? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. But for sure, people don't get into divorce so that they uh, get into marriage so that they can divorce. 
It just happens. And you know why marriages, I mean, why divorces become very acrimonious is because you never expected it. It comes as a shock and you are not prepared and you don't have a plan. And now when you're found flat-footed like that, what do you do? You get defensive, you start running around, scrambling for what you can grab for yourself. You go to court and you make declarations and you do what? You are caught flat-footed. Had you prepared yourself for this? I think preparation usually prevents all this antagonistic litigation and all that. Had you prepared yourself, it wouldn't end up that way. It would be a very amicable separation. Okay, maybe not very, but it would be less less of a war. The boundaries are there to be seen. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's better you go knowing than you go and get surprised when the divorce comes or if it comes. Mm. Yeah. So many people don't do prenups just the same way they don't uh, like to draw wills. But for those who do, it's sort of like a cushion for them should the worst happen. Yeah. Mm. And other people also uh, give up on their marriage but still stay married. And when you ask them the reason why, they say I've invested so much in this marriage in terms of uh, properties, uh, in terms of children and all that, I can't leave. So they stay just to avoid losing out on the financial material things. Yeah. But if you had prepared yourself and the marriage becomes unbearable, then you wouldn't have to tolerate an unbearable situation because you're afraid of losing out on the lifestyle that you're used to. Yeah. But then again, there's that Christian aspect. We cannot dictate to people. You're making vows. They ought to be forever. Go ahead and hope for the best. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, <laughs> we will find the next cause of action. Mm. Mm. This is just for people who are liberal enough to actually open their mind and make decisions for themselves above and beyond the religious doctrines. So you go, the prenup, you said, you talked about the prenup very, very, in a, in, in a very summary, uh, mm -hmm. summarized way. Mm -hmm. So you list all your... Mm -hmm. What you came with, and then of course there's what you don't know because you're not, you've not yet acquired it. You can put a clause for that uh, in anticipation of what you want to acquire, for example, a matrimonial home, and discuss about what's going to happen to that. Also, the law doesn't consider the property you come with as matrimonial property, but you can add it there and say, I love my wife so much. Should we um, not work out? I want to give her 50% of what I'm coming into the marriage. You put that in a prenup. Yeah. A prenup, as I said earlier, it's up to you and your spouse. Nobody will come to ah. dictate. The law will only dictate matrimonial property when you go to court. But everything else, it's up to you and her to decide. So you say in the prenup mm -hmm. that in, in case we are not able to go on with this marriage, mm -hmm. I will give you uh, uh, title, deed number, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And you can say, I'll keep for myself this. And you keep for yourself that. Or you will give me this and I'll give you that. Or everyone just go with what they bought what they came with in the marriage, and what they acquired while in the marriage. So the good thing about the prenup is that you can actually get what, what, you, are, what, what you don't deserve. Who gets to decide what you deserve? No, I'm saying... <laughs> well, according well, to law, yes. You can get what you don't deserve according to the law. According to the law. Because, yes. you, because we came here mm -hmm. and we said that in case that we dissolve this marriage, mm -hmm. I, will, I will give you uh, this block that, yes. has got, that has got this... This this uh, this twenty units. Mm -hmm. So out of this block that is fifty six units, I will give you twenty units. Mm -hmm. I'll deposit as matrimonial property. Mm -hmm. This twenty six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is recorded. Mm -hmm. So then 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 the prenup is not is not just what you bring, mm -hmm. but what you what you bring, but also what you'd like to share and and put in the pool. Exactly. And also the prenup is not only about property; it's also about the children. You can also decide for yourself in case uh, we go our, our separate ways, how are we going to co-parent and put it in the printer? Really? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> because if you don't have that, then uh, 
you get to that point now you start talking about okay we have to go to court for custody we have to go to court for child support or we have to go and see a lawyer to help us draft a parental responsibility agreement you could have done that even before the children were born you know a general overview an idea or if you're already married and here are the children you can do a postnup it's the same as a prenup but now you're doing it when you're already married you already know this is uh, this is the property we have these are the children we have this is what we would like to do in case what what are some of the things that really uh, shock spouses mm -hmm. when they show up to to divide property what are some of the mm -hmm. things that that shock them that mm -hmm. they're saying oh i did not see this coming mm -hmm. i did not see this coming yeah yeah um what shocks people let's say for example women are the ones who get shocked the most because you find uh, the dynamics in a marriage are that the man is the head of the family. And so even if she's the one who's getting loans from her banks and circles, she gives him the money. Yeah, trusting that he will make a good decision for the family. And he goes and buys a property and uh, puts it in his name. And she's none the wiser. In fact, that's not even a good example because even if it's in his name, it's still, it's still matrimonial property. Let's say he puts it in his company. He has a company, he's a director, he could be a sole director or he could be a director with somebody else and he puts it in the name of the company. And the wife knows we have this piece of land, they've been going together, they've visited it, they have developed it. But when it comes to division, it is discovered that it is not matrimonial property. That is very shocking to her and it is quite common you know and um, at that point it is rather late to do anything it's rather late because it is registered under the company it's not matrimonial property mm. yeah that is the one i find uh most women find themselves in that situation and other times they don't even know the property the husband owns or has acquired some men acquire property and do it secretly. They don't involve the wife. And so when it comes to declaring, there's nothing she can tell her lawyer. When she's asked what property do you own, you and your husband or your husband, she's clueless. She'll only state one or two that she knows. But in the background, the husband has so much more. More so, than 10, 20, 30. You know. But she only knows about two or three or four. Exactly. Which won't get her far anyway. Because if she's been uh, in the background, most likely she's not, uh, she doesn't have evidence to show her contribution. Yeah. So she will come out with very little. Because at least if you're, if you're claiming non-financial, you'll get something. You won't come out with nothing. But it won't really be worth the whole 10, 20, 15 years you are together in marriage you'll feel cheated you'll feel disenfranchised it will take a longer time for you to heal from that uh divorce some women never even heal from it and it becomes especially if you're the one being divorced so now he has left you and he's taken everything mm. it's quite a bitter pill to swallow yeah mm. how do you think that uh, the government or you as a lawyer mm -hmm. can can force the other spouse to reveal everything they have. Somebody has to move the court. Somebody has to move the court because the court will not do anything without being moved. The government is even <laughs> more difficult. How, how will the government come and force somebody? Uh, who will move the government? Maybe the court through an order. But who will move the court? The one who is aggrieved. Let's say it's the wife. You suspect that he has some hidden property. Um, there's, there's a certain class I, I attended, I think, last month. Uh, there were a lot of Americans there. And they actually have a professional who does that to investigate and discover. They call it discovery of the property that is matrimonial, whether one spouse tries to hide it or not. We don't have that here. I, I feel like I feel like the the, the, the way they investigate is just go mm -hmm. to uh, company registry mm -hmm. and run his name there mm -hmm. and go to whatever to the to the title deed whatever uh, body and run his name there. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in Kenya. You can, but it's up to you. The government is not going to get involved. 
it is up to you, the aggrieved party. Go look for a PI. Instruct them. This is what I want you to find out for me. They will do it for you. But the court, hmm. the government, <laughs> we've not reached there. <laughs> it is. It is very. It's very very. It's very very tough when it's you. It's quite tough when you love love. It's very difficult for love to disintegrate in that way. In yeah. in the sense that now what we have built is now coming down, mm -hmm. and everybody has to rummage through the rubble mm -hmm. and get whatever they want. Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult. There are twisted wires. Mm -hmm. You know there are broken glasses. Mm -hmm. You know you can't you can't really you can't really 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 mm. tell. Yeah. It's it's and that's so 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 probably we'll uh, we'll stop it there and then and then and then and then go back and uh, maybe I want to take tea. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go back to discussing the uh, child custody, which is yeah. a which is a very sticky thing. And one of the yeah. things I want to discuss is why it's always the lady that is the the, the woman that is remaining with the children. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what happens? Do the children get anything from when the, you know we have this cake that is now being divided? Mm -hmm. Does it does it just go to the lady to the to the to the two people? Mm -hmm. um, uh, does some go to the to the children? Can I say that uh, for the property that I have, I want to I want to give it mm -hmm. to the children? All right. So people of the internet, uh, that was a discussion with Christine about wealth distribution in case the divorce is coming to an end or it being dissolved. So part two, we are going to be talking about uh, child custody. Where do the children go when this thing is no longer working between the two of us? So check it out. Until another episode, bye for now.